All right, let's go over the lesson three practice problems. I'm going to walk through each one of them. I'm going to go sort of quickly. If you need to pause at any time to write things down, then feel free and go ahead and do that. All right, first it says, list all the possible outcomes for spinning the spinner and flipping a fair coin. So remember, flipping a fair coin, we're going to have the options of tails or heads. And then spinning the spinner, I have the options of X, Y, and Z. So if it says to list them all, I have to write out what the possible um, options are. If it says um, how many, then I'm just going to count them. But in order to list them all out, I'm going to use one of the strategies that we talked about uh, when we first started talking about sample spaces. So one of the things that uh, ways that we looked at creating a sample space was we looked at creating a table to help us list that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the options for uh, what I could spin on the spinner in the rows. So I'm going to put X, Y, and Z on the rows. I'm going to leave this one blank. And then I'll across the top, I'm going to put the options for the second thing, which is flipping a fair coin. This is going to be tails or heads. So one option is to get X and tails, or I could get X and heads. Or I can get Y and tails, or I can get Y and heads. Or I can get Z and tails, or I can get Z and heads. So I do have to actually list them out. So my sample space would be XT, XH, YT, YH, ZT, ZH. There are six outcomes in my sample space. So what I do is I set up one of the set of options on this side, and then I set the other set of options across the top, and then you just fill in each square. Now you may be able to, you know, fill in the first row and then see the pattern and then be able to like follow an organized list to create the rest. All right, number two. Number two is very similar because it says a student picks a random letter from the word cat and a random letter from the word meow. So along those same lines, um, I've got a pick from C-A-T as my first set of options, and then I've got a pick from M-E-O-W as my second set of options. I can actually make a table for this one also. And I'll show you how we can get started on it. Actually, this one doesn't ask me to list out the sample space, so I'm just gonna create it in the table. Again, I'm gonna leave the first row blank, and then I'm gonna do C-A-T for each of those options, make a row for each one. And then I've got to fit M-E-O-W on the top. M-E-O-W. Each one getting their own column. And so I could get a C from cat and an M from meow, or a C from cat and an E from meow, or a C from cat and an O from meow, or a C from cat and a W from meow. I can do the same thing with A. I can get an AM, an AE, an AO, an AW. I could get a TM, a TE, a TO, and a TW. So how many outcomes are in the sample space? Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What is the probability that a C is chosen? So my notation for that would be probability of getting a C. Out of these 12, I get a C one, two, three, four times. So it's four out of 12, which is one out of three, which is 0.33. What's the probability that a W is chosen? So probability of a W is 1, 2, 3 out of the 12, which is 1 out of 4, which is 0 0.25. What's the probability a C and a W are chosen? So 
probability of CW or C, you can say C and W. Um, these all have a C in them, but only this one has a CW. And there's no other CWs anywhere, so it's only one out of the 12. Which I don't know that one off the top of my head, but if I grab my calculator, do one divided by 12. I get 0 0.083, so it's going to be 0 0.08 for that one. All right, on to the next one. Tyler decides which type of pizza to order. The choices for crust are thin crust or regular crust. The choices for one topping are pepperoni, mushrooms, olives, sausage, or green peppers. Tyler has trouble deciding because there are so many possibilities. He selects the type of crust and one topping at random. How many outcomes are in the sample space? This one might be a little easier to do with a tree diagram. We can say our options are thin crust or regular crust. And whichever one we choose, we're gonna have we're gonna be choosing from pepperoni, or mushrooms, or olives, or sausage, or green peppers. And for this one, we're gonna have the same options. We're gonna have pepperoni, mushrooms, olives, sausage, green peppers. So for each of the crusts, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five options. So there's going to be a total of 10 options altogether. Let's look at the second page here. All right. So again, for this one, now we're looking at uh, question number four. A spinner is divided into five equal sections. Two of them are red, one of them is orange, one is yellow, and one is green. So I'm thinking of a spinner. I'm going to do my best to divide it evenly. I've got two are red, one is orange, one is yellow, one is green. So what's the probability that it lands on red? So probability of getting a red, since they're all equal, is two out of the five. So two-fifths, which is 0 0.40. What's the probability that it lands on orange or yellow? The probability of orange or yellow. So I got these two sections, again, two out of the five. Could land on orange and it would fulfill what I'm looking for. Or could land on yellow, it would fulfill what I'm looking for. So it's two out of five, which again, is 0 0.40. What's the probability that it lands on blue? The probability of it landing on blue. So of these five, none of them are blue, so zero out of five. It's just zero. So it seems like a, I guess you could call that a trick question, but it's really just, there is no probability it will land on blue, there's no blue on the spinner. All right, and let's go on to this last one. Select all the situations that have a 25% chance of occurring. So I need to find the probability of each one, and if it is 25% chance, which is going to be a 0.25 for a probability, then I'm going to select it. So rolling a standard number cube, so that's rolling a die. The options on a standard number cube are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So the probability of getting a 4 is 1 out of a 6. So probability of rolling a 4 equals 1 out of 6. That is not 0.25 plus. It's less than uh, 0.25. If I do 1 divided by 6, it is 0.17. So I don't want to choose this one. So then I have the next option, flipping two fair coins and getting heads on the first flip, tails on the second flip. So if I'm thinking of flipping two coins, if I get a tails or a head on the first flip, I'm then looking at tails 
or heads on the second flip, I can get tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, heads, heads. So there's four options. Let me zoom in for, that, for you for that one. Um, of those four options, I want first getting heads on the first and tails on the second. So that's heads, tails. There's only one. So one out of four. So the probability of getting heads and tails, heads first, tails second, is one out of four options. So that's a 0.25. So I want to choose this one. Picking a letter at random from the word Kalamata and getting an A. So I want the probability of picking an A from this word, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. So out of the eight letters, the possibility of me getting an A, I have one, two, three, four of them. Four out of eight, which is one half, which is 0.5. So I don't want this one. And then uh, picking a letter at random from the word calamity and getting an A. So again, we're going to do the probability of getting an A. One, two, three, four. Again, eight letters. Two of them are A's. Two out of eight is one out of four, which is 0.25. So I'm going to pick this one. And lastly, getting the correct answer when guessing randomly on a multiple choice question that has four choices. So my choices are A, B, C, D. Only one of them is going to be right, so it's one out of four. So the probability of getting it correct is one out of four, which is 0.25. So I want this one also. All right. We got, that's it. That's our last question for this one. Um, so feel free to let me know if you still have questions on how to do any of these problems, but thank you for following along. Hopefully everything makes more sense now.